If you're just getting started off in business and you have yet to make your first sale, how can you possibly get anybody to take you seriously? Have you ever struggled with the idea that people are gonna look at you or maybe even overlook you simply because you've only just gotten started? What possible value can a newbie offer to a whole industry of people who are struggling and need help? And more importantly, how do you leverage your experience to help other people break through and finally take that first step toward building their dream. What's up my friends, JT DeBolt with you today for the Elite Marketing Pro Daily Dose of Awesome. And today we're gonna to be talking about those questions and more to help you expand your influence in your business. So as you jump out here, let me know where you're tuning in from. And as you do, let me welcome you by saying good morning, good afternoon and good evening, whatever time it is for you, no matter where you might be tuning in from on the Big Blue Marble, thanks for joining us here each and every single Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Always a privilege and an honor to be with you guys. What's up, Alicia? Coming in from Tennessee. Good to see you, my friend. And of course, Chuck. What's going on, brother? Go say hi to Susan for me, will you? Richard and Joanna, what's happening? Samra, what's happening, my friend? Good to see you as always. Bart Ripple in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, he says he just finished Duckworth's Grit and just started Extreme Ownership. All right, Bart. That is a heck of a library you got building there. I love those books. Two of my faves. Rebecca Grant in the house. What's going on? Good to see you. David Schmidt, what's happening? Angel, uh, Angel Ray Whitney, what's going on? Ray Perlman's with us. David Schmidt, uh, Fran, Rebecca Graff, what's going on, girl? By the way, welcome, Rebecca. She's one of our newest mentors. Stoked to have you on the team with us, Rebecca. You are awesome. Austin Huber's in the house. Shay Irvin, Donna Campbell Carlson coming in from Pennsylvania. So let's talk about this this little topic, because this comes up quite a bit. Uh, I've seen this happen a lot of times uh, during the fast track workshops that we conduct almost monthly. And just this past weekend when I was in Los Angeles, we were doing the uh, VIP regional event, which was amazing. Great to meet so many friends that, uh, you know, for the first time, sometimes in person, but also to reconnect with some folks that have been with us for a while. And a thing that comes up quite a bit, in fact, that came up this past weekend was this idea of if I'm creating content or if I'm doing a Facebook Live or if I'm doing anything where I'm communicating with the outside world with my business online, how is it that if I'm brand new, um, how is it that I have the ability or the authority to actually uh, draw somebody's attention and, and close a sale? What is it about me personally that somebody would actually want to invest in if I haven't gotten any results for myself? Now, if you've ever had this thought in the back of your mind, maybe it's a concern or maybe it's a flat out fear. Perhaps it's something that has absolutely stopped you dead in your tracks. So whether it's just a small concern or a small thought or a flat out fear, doesn't matter what the scale of that is. I want you to hit me up with a one in the chat box and let me know if this has ever happened for you where it's either been just a slight thought in your mind or a flat out something, a huge reservation for you as you build your business. Let me know for those of you for whom that is a concern where you're saying to yourself, well, I don't have any results or perhaps I'm so new to the process that, you know, I don't feel like I have the authority to, uh, to lead anybody. Let's see, hey, what's going on? Lots of friends coming in. I just love saying hi to you guys. It's like literally my favorite part of the daily dose is saying hi to folks. It's good to see you guys. All right, so lots of people uh, dialing one. And here's the thing, Susie Ann Houghton coming in from Jamaica. What's up, Susie Ann? I'm gonna be in Jamaica as, a lot, as are a lot of us coming up here in about a month um, or two. <laughs> I can't remember. Okay, so lots of ones. Um, Rebecca Graff said it used to. So Rebecca, I'm interested. I wanna hear your perspective on this. Um, here's the thing. A lot of folks, including myself, have felt this, where when you're first getting started on in business, you don't necessarily have what most people might think of as a result yet, because they're not quite clear on what that is, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, we're looking at this and we're saying to ourselves, okay, if the outside world is looking for help, they wanna build a business, they wanna increase their income, maybe they wanna expand their wealth, uh, maybe they wanna learn how to do the marketing techniques and strategies that are necessary in order to get the results, but I haven't gotten those results myself, how possibly, can I lead somebody else? And this happens quite a bit. I have to tell you, it's one of the biggest concerns that I have entrepreneurs approach me with when it comes to building their business online, specifically online. And let's just talk about that for two seconds. The reason I've seen, at least just what I've uh, observed and, and you know been able to kind of derive from the conversations that people have shared with me one-on-one -on -one, is they say, hey, it's the, on the world of online business is much more encompassing, much more uh, inclusive, than offline business, like traditional brick and mortar. And it's 
obvious, you know, for, for a lot of reasons, the biggest one being the, the entry, <laughs> the cost of entry, if you will, the investment entry, entry investment for an offline business or a brick and mortar business is into the hundreds of thousands, sometimes even millions of dollars, right? So anywhere from a quarter to a half to all the way to a full million dollars and beyond is what it might take to start a traditional brick and mortar business, depending on the type of business, depending on if it's a franchise, yada, yada, yada. And so to that point, it automatically uh, weeds a lot of folks out. Whereas with an online business, it makes it much more attainable for most people. You don't have to be uh, you know, well-financed necessarily to get going in your first business. Even if it's just throwing up an ad for your own product or throwing up an ad for something that's an affiliate that you're, or that you're an affiliate for, it doesn't require the extensive income in order to, or the extensive layout in order to get started with an online business, which means that a lot more people can do it, which means that there's gonna be a lot more people who are brand new starting out. Can you see where that correlation actually happens? So this isn't just for, you know, a few people think, well, it's just me, you know, oh, maybe I'm just the one that has this concern. Actually, no, a lot of folks have this concern and this is the reason that it comes up quite a bit. But because it happens for a lot of people, it should tell us right off the bat that that means we are not unique, meaning we don't have that problem just to ourselves. A lot of other folks will understand that. There's a great saying, and I, got, and I want you guys to remember this. We talk about this a lot in the workshops. It's extremely important. If you're a note taker, write this down. A fourth grader is a god to a second grader, <laughs> which means you do not have to have all the answers. You don't have to be the PhD college graduate. You don't even have to be the high school graduate. You don't even have to be in middle school, metaphorically speaking, when it comes to your business knowledge or your business experience in order to be taken seriously. You just have to care enough to share with people what's working for you currently. Now, this conversation came up this weekend, and I got to tell you, it was a really powerful conversation. What I loved and the reason that I found it to be super powerful was the transformation I saw happen in the moment in that room right on the spot. It was a realization that folks who had already been out there running an ad, okay, and been doing Facebook Lives and sharing their message, they realized, holy cow, you know, I've actually had the opportunity and have been making an impact and didn't even realize it because they were the metaphorical fourth grader. They at least had like in some cases VIP. So they have been a VIP student for a while. And so they had a background and some knowledge and in fact had results they didn't even realize. So here's a question for you guys. Um, how many folks out there right now are running an ad? Okay, if you're running an ad, give me a two. You've got an ad actively running uh, right now with your business. Doesn't matter what it is, whether you're promoting EMP, whether you're promoting a network marketing uh, uh, thing, or maybe it's another affiliate program. Um, maybe you're running an ad to uh, promote your own business, your own, you know, you, your own brand, whatever it is. As long as you've got an ad running, that's all I want to know. Um, and even if it's a, uh, a likes campaign, that's fine. Just if you've got an ad out there running, you have an ad running, I want to know too. All right, lots of people currently running ads. That is awesome. Here's the reality. You right now have a result. You have a result. You've done something to this point that a lot of wannabe entrepreneurs have not yet done. There's a lot of folks out there who are dreaming big, sharing all the motivational memes and talking about how great life's going to be someday when they get big, fat, fancy, and, and uh, you know, rich off their business. But they haven't done the one fundamental thing they have to do, and that is launch an ad. <laughs> Nobody's going to send you any kind of money magically. It doesn't happen that way. You have to have a vehicle, an avenue uh, by which those folks even can find out about you, and that's what an ad does. So even if it's a likes campaign, it doesn't have to necessarily be an ad that's actually promoting something for you to sell. As long as you are out, out there actively promoting yourself, you are that metaphorical fourth grader to a second grader. The second grader are the folks out there that are kind of kicking the can a little bit, right? They're looking for a business, but they haven't taken the action to do anything yet which means you are automatically a couple of steps ahead of them. And they need that, they value that, and they're actually looking for it. So that should tell you something about the fact that you are leading from the front and you have a tangible result. Doesn't mean you've made a sale yet necessarily, you don't have to. It doesn't mean that you've made your you know, six figure income yet, you don't have to. This is a tangible result. Now let's think about this for a second. What is it about that result that's powerful in the eyes of somebody who might identify as a second grader, metaphorically speaking, in business. What is it about what you've done just by placing that ad that is a powerful result? 
Go ahead and type it into the chat box. I want to hear what you guys have to add to this. I want to make this as interactive as possible because understanding the power and the value behind what we do is extremely important. But even more important, more important than the value, in fact, the thing that supports the understanding of the value is understanding the purpose, all right? And we'll get to that in a second. What is it about running an ad um, that is a result in and of itself and something that the person that's watching you, following you, listening to your ad or reading your ad or, or showing up to your Facebook Lives will get value from? What is it about that? Rebecca says, even just having a fan page is a result spot on. Absolutely, Rebecca, 100% agree with that. Because if you've thrown up a fan page, you actually have some place for people to go. All right, that's a result, something that's a tangible asset in your business that you can create, you can refine, you can you can continue to grow. So that's a great example. Even before you get the ad, you got to have that. Um, Jamal says uh, facts. Okay, so I don't know what you mean by that, Jamal, but uh, uh, I, I think I agree with you. There is. You will, if you post an ad, for instance, it gives you something that you can factually go, okay, this is how I did it. This is what it required of me to write the ad and how I actually posted it. Believe it or not, uh, a lot of people wouldn't even know the first thing about how to post an ad on Facebook. Having data from our ads, Ray says, now Ray, by the way, you rock star you, you have a little bit of insight on this because you were at the workshop this weekend and I think it's so super cool that you shared that. It's so important to understand this. The single most valuable piece of an ad is not the lead. The single most valuable piece of an ad is not the sale. Those are awesome byproducts, okay? But what Ray is talking about here, what she shared with us, what she's teaching us here, is the fact that what the real value is behind an ad is the data, the metrics that you get. Now, I want you to be clear on this. That is a tangible result that you can point to. Now, what is it about what Ray said that's so powerful? What is it about the data? What is it about the metrics that you get from an ad that are even more powerful and more valuable than the lead or the sale that might come from it as a direct court, you know, just as a, as a, uh, as a consequence of running the ad? What's more important about the, or I should say more powerful than just the sale or just the lead? What is it about those, those data or those metrics that's, that's even more important? Go ahead and type it into the chat box. Um, Susie Ann says, it increases confidence. Spot on, girlfriend. Yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. Um, uh, let's see, Rebecca says, and that you know how to do it and can help others. Exactly. You can actually show them how to, how to place an ad. Or you can at least talk through your experience. If you're not at that place of confidence yet, or maybe you haven't quite got the skills to show somebody how to do it, which you do, <laughs> it's just a matter of saying, hey, this is how I did it. That might instill in a person the confidence that they can go out and do it. It might also give them the tools, the roadmap that they can actually follow in your footsteps. Um, let's see, Jan says, powerful result. Went through the entire process and learned how to get the ad approved. That's a huge victory. To get an ad approved is a major roadblock or a major uh, milestone in the beginning phases of, a, of an entrepreneur's journey. You have to get the ad approved. It's one thing to write an ad. And by the way, we've seen this. We've seen folks who have taken that first bold step to write the ad, but they haven't taken the next biggest bold step, and that is to actually place it to get it approved. So I love what Jan's sharing there. Uh, Pamela says, running an ad means I know uh, how to run an ad and can share that valuable knowledge with others. Faux show. That is so true. Uh, Ron says, you demonstrate that you have the skills set that you would need and would like to cultivate. For sure. So here's the thing. When you get the ad out there running, it shows that you can actually do it, right? You, and you've taken the action to do it. This is, again, leading by example, gang. And this is the thing that's so important. What people don't care, well, let's say this, they care about your results. They want to see the ad. They want to see the sales. They want to see the money, blah, blah, blah. They think it's really cool that you can walk across the stage and be acknowledged as a leader, as a top earner. I'm not undermining that stuff, okay? So, so by all means, if that's your aspiration, you want to have some of those results in your business, by all means, go for it and realize that that will come, okay? But right now, we're talking about in the beginning stages, the super important, the, the first stages where the ground is fertile for you to grow. This is key and essential because a lot of times people undermine their own accomplishments. And an accomplishment like writing an ad is a big damn deal. An accomplishment like posting an ad is a huge deal. And the fact that you got it approved and it's out there running, even if it's a likes campaign, you have won the game. Okay, at least the first part of the game. Now it's time to get back out there and start kicking butt. 
Bart says a 5.29 CTR and 10 cent cost per lead in his latest ad. Dude, get some. That's Those are pretty decent numbers. And if you guys continue to stick with your knowledge and learning and education on what those numbers mean, the click-through rate and the cost per click, you start to understand what those metrics actually mean, the meaning behind them and understand them. Not just, okay, it's a number and I'm gonna memorize it, what the words mean, but how those, how those metrics work together to support the ad itself, that's when you become very, very strong as a marketer because not only do you understand the necessity of running an ad, you understand how the ad works. And when you have that level of understanding, that's where you become super valuable to the, uh, to the people that follow you even if they've had more experience. Now, here's another question that comes up quite a bit in these conversations is, okay, JT, fourth grader to a second grader, that's awesome, but what happens if I, the fourth grader, attract the attention of an eighth grader, metaphorically speaking? Ah, meaning you're pretty new, maybe brand new in your business, and all of a sudden, somebody with results, with traction, maybe they're building, a, maybe they've got a team they're building. Uh, maybe they are the people that have been acknowledged walking across the stage. What if those people join you? What if those people start following you? If this has ever happened to you, where you're the, the newer person and you get a more seasoned veteran or a more seasoned pe person with more results than you following you, and now they're paying attention, type a three into the chat box if that's ever happened to you. I want to know, folks, for whom you've had this, where all of a sudden you've got people who you look at as having better results than you, paying attention to you, listening to your message. This can be, by the way, a little intimidating, and I will put my hand up. This has happened to me. This happened to me quite a bit. Still to this day will happen. Jan says this happened to her. Um, Tracy, another one of our amazing mentors, says understand the metrics. Spot on, girlfriend, because if you understand the metrics, you understand ads. It's just a matter of reapplying that knowledge with an evaluated-based mindset to actually uh, – Get the, get the job done. Woo, lots of people dialing threes. Julie Vance says me. Well, of course, Julie. <laughs> Julie's a kick-ass uh, leader here in the community and it would not surprise me. In fact, it doesn't surprise me if any of you guys who are typing three are starting to get the, at the attention of people that are maybe a little further ahead of you in business. That's what attraction marketing will do for you. This is a huge right here. Just take a look. If you don't trust me, if you don't believe me, look in the chat box, look in the look in the uh, in the comment section here, and see not just who is saying this, but the quality of the human beings who are saying three. These are strong, good people. You guys are all good people, but sometimes I think you don't understand that about yourself, or maybe if you do, you haven't given yourself that old pat on the back and said, "Come on, baby, I'm I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Let's get out there." And so I want you to really get that. Now, Rebecca brings up a really important thing I was not going to discuss today, but I'm going to hit it right now because it's super important. She says imposter syndrome. Oh my gosh, how in the heck is this person who's got bigger, better results than me attracted to and listening to me? I must be, I must be an imposter. You know, I must be a fraud. We start thinking about ourselves this way. Listen, don't worry about that. When we think about imposter syndrome, it's a very normal thing, by the way. It's a very normal thing. You're going to feel it more than once if you felt it, if you felt it the one time. And here's the reality. If you ever feel imposter syndrome, remember, in that moment, you're more making it about yourself than you're making it about other people. About other people. Now, that doesn't make you selfish. It doesn't make you an egotistic maniac. It just means that in that moment, that's where the attention and the energy and the focus is. So what might we do different is to back out just a little bit and realize, hey, just for right now, I have a place in that person's heart. I have a place in their attention. And as opposed to them paying attention to other stuff that's ineffective or listening to stuff that may not be serving them or moving them forward, they're actually listening to me. So I have a responsibility in these few moments in front of them to deliver the best I know to deliver. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be awesome. Don't be perfect, just be awesome. If you guys have been to the workshops or followed me long enough, you know that's my mantra, something I created years and years ago because it's the freaking truth. Nobody here is, is, is perfect and we're not expecting you to be perfect, but each and every single one of you is awesome. You have your own definition, your own version of awesome that sometimes is clouded and hidden behind, you know, self-doubt or whatever. Or maybe you think I'm not ready for this. But if you just let that crap come out and shine, you're going to blast people back. They're going to love that. And they're going to they're going to be attracted to you because they don't want to see perfection. Perfection can be a little bit intimidating. I mean, if you've ever seen anybody who tries to pre present themselves as perfect, it seems like they don't miss up. They never make mistakes. It seems like their life's totally in order. Isn't it just a little bit off-putting? 
Isn't there a part of you going, hmm, what's missing? It feels like they're holding something back or they got something stuck inside their jacket. You know, like those people that used to stand on the street corner and sell you watches, <laughs> right? It feels like that. You're like, hey, dude, what's up with this person? Whereas the person who presents themselves with all their flaws, all their imperfections, but they're willing to give anyway, to be generous enough, courageous enough to share, no matter what they've accomplished, those are the kind of people that create influence faster. And not just faster, but longer lasting. That's the influence that sticks. If this is, hey, by the way, if this is making sense for you, give me a five in the chat box, as in like a high five. I want to see what's going on in your heart, hearts, minds, and soul. Um, here's the thing. Um, you know, okay, so here's the, here's the deal. If people want to reach out to you and they want advice, it's probably because they notice a gap. They notice a gap somewhere in their life, somewhere in their business, maybe it's somewhere in their belief system, where they, but they see that you have the answer. Do not undermine that need for people. Don't second guess it. Don't question it. You might want to explore deeper and try to get to know them better and, and figure out where that gap is. But there's a reason that they're following you, even if they're passive, right? Even if they're not the people that are necessarily chiming into your comment section or answering your engagement questions. If they're just kind of sitting back and they're watching you, understand that people are watching you, especially if they stick with you for, for a little bit, they're listening and getting something from you. They're actually actively listening. Like they're, they're, they're getting what you're saying. They're picking up what you're putting down. And in some cases, they may be coming from a place of skepticism. They may be saying, hey, I don't know if this person's got it, but I'm going to stick around and figure out, right? That's possible. They may also be coming from a place of saying, holy crap, I did not see this person coming. I did not see this. And maybe, maybe they didn't even realize they had a gap. That's what's so important about being newer in business and having the ability to go out and actually do your thing. So if you are not currently doing Facebook Lives, if you are not currently running an ad, my challenge to you is this. This is Tuesday. Before week's end, I want you to commit to putting that ad out there, running the ad and seeing how it goes. Or, and, and or, <laughs> doing at least one Facebook Live. If you have not done one, your challenge, my challenge to you is to make it happen by the end of this week. If you are somebody who is not currently running a Facebook ad, or if you are somebody who is not currently doing or hasn't done a Facebook Live in a very, very, very long time, and you're willing to accept that challenge, give me a seven in the chat box. The lucky number seven is people like say, I wanna see the sevens from the people who are either not actively running an ad or have turned it off, or have not done a Facebook Live or haven't done one in a very long time, and you're willing to accept my challenge, that you're going to get the ad running and or put the Facebook Live out there this week before the end of Sunday. If you are one of those folks, I wanna see sevens in the chat box. I wanna see the lots of high fives, cool, I love it. Lots of high fives. Okay, I'm seeing the sevens from Mary Doyle, from James A Jamel Applewhite, uh, Sharon Kropp, uh, Aredi Joel, Joel uh, David Schmidt, Austin Huber, Alicia Holland, Don ba Baggett, all right, cool. Samra Mai, sorry, we'll get out more Facebook Lives. Samra, you do Facebook Lives all the time. Come on, what are you talking about, my friend? I know you better than that. Julie Vance, Yarl uh, Rivera, Terry Fuji. Okay, cool. Listen, I love you guys. You have my 100% support. I got your six. So get out there and make it happen. Now, for those of you who have a Facebook Live or a Facebook ad that is currently running, or you are a person that's very active in doing your Facebook Lives, I have a challenge for you as well. And the challenge is this. Start, if you haven't already done this, start reaching out to help other people, either here in the EMP community or outside of it in your own team, to get them active as well. It's the simple fact of this. If we can get more people in actual motion and actually doing stuff in their business that moves them forward, that's where the true confidence comes from. They're gonna to start to take action and go, okay, cool, I got this. But more importantly, they're gonna to start to see you as extremely valuable because you were the person that was the instigator. You, in some cases, were the initiator, the one, the kick in the butt that they really freaking needed to get moving, and that's a pretty powerful thing, and that's gonna be immensely valuable to them and immensely valuable for you. So. Put yourself out there as a leader. Challenge yourself. I'm challenging you as your friend to push yourself and to be more of a leader than you are right now. Not to say that more of a leader from a place of judgment, not more of a leader from a place that you're not good enough. What I'm talking about 
is stretching that, that comfort level, taking it to that next ring, taking it a little bit further and a little bit further so that you can start to expand your influence and start to expand your reach and expand your impact on the world. You got this, my friends. It's just a matter of understanding. Just because you don't have the big paychecks yet, just because you haven't been acknowledged as a top income producer, just because you haven't been the person propped up by your company or whatever as one of the top people in the company does not mean you are not one of those people in the making. It just means you're not there yet. The key word being yet. Yet is the word that I want you to attach to it. And then it's time to get going. It's time to realize what you have, the power you have as your influential self. <laughs> Don't be perfect. What? Don't be perfect. What? Just be awesome. Get some. All right, my friends, listen, I love you guys. I appreciate you. I really do love this, all this awesome stuff that you guys got coming out. James Concilio saying normal is an illusion, just like perfect. Normal doesn't exist. What exists is you and the world and the marketplace needs you. There's only one of you. The world needs all that is uniquely you. Well said, my brother. Well, well said, by the way, uh, fellow Navy guy. So makes sense. He's super smart. Um, that's right. Just be awesome. And here's the thing. There's never, it's the longer you delay this, it only, it only, it only hurts you, but it also delays the impact you have on other people. So don't delay this week. For those of you who, who gave me a seven, do your fa first Facebook live and, or get that ad running. All right. And you, the sooner you do both of those, the sooner you will get the real tangible results, which are the metrics that come with doing that kind of work. And from there, you can still plug into the community, get advice and help from the mentors and from your coaches as far as what to do next. But the first thing you got to get doing is get that sucker in motion and get it moving. And for those of you who have already got the traction and you've been moving forward, now the challenge is to get out there and start to expand your influence and your impact. And you know how to do that. That's to share your wisdom, share your experience, and share what you've done. In other words, share your awesomeness. All right, my friends, I got a jam. Hope you have an amazing rest of your week. Thank you for joining us here each and every single Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And remember, no matter what course you fly in life, fly high, fly fast, and fly far. We'll see you very soon. Make it an amazing day.